Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope you guys have been having an excellent week. I most certainly have been. I hope you guys are ready for the brand new additions to the Brutal Awakenings playlist, which will be unveiled tomorrow. Jerry Monk, the metal architect, has been listening listening to music all day today trying to find the hottest the coolest the most extreme brand new metal tracks which have just dropped today and he is putting them all into the brutal awakenings playlist for our listening pleasure trust me if you are looking for something to listen to look no further because the brutal awakenings playlist has everything that you want in it you can listen to the brutal awakenings playlist on either apple music or spotify and the links for those playlists are available in the description of this podcast on today's episode i am with kevin muller of the merciless concept here it is everyone this is vox and hops episode number 221 i warn you what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Kevin Muller of The Merciless Concept. He also used to sing for a little death metal band called Suffocation, as well as Pyrexia. Uh, how are you doing? How are you doing, Kevin? Let's start with a very simple yet complex question. How are you coping with 2020? Oh, bro, that's going to be this whole interview. <laughs> it's uh, We're coping. Thankfully, I'm coping just fine. Uh, I'm glad to be on. Um, let's just say... Things are going smooth, which we'll definitely get into on here. And then, uh, yeah, I'm working a little bit on the side. I got the Twitch keeping me alive. Everybody's here watching, hanging out. That's amazing. And uh, things are great. Awesome. So hello to everyone watching at home. This is a first time doing an interview live on Twitch, as I mentioned. So that's amazing. Let's uh, dance right into it. You, you mentioned uh, Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with my metal friends and talking about their lives, music, and craft beer. So, so what beer do you have on your side there, Kevin? And uh, tell me the whole story about how you didn't buy it at a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, I'm drinking uh, Nightmare Brewing. Yes, yes. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Long Island Proud as well. Here, let me see that. The Twitch can see that. And the and the, the flavor and the everything of it right now is a Colombian necktie. It's a, it's a, I think it's pronounced ghost ale sourced in mangoes with Lulo. Damn right. Sour sop and Colombian lime zest. Oh, I love beers like that. Gozas. Yes, I love them. I love them. It, yeah. Salty. It's a salty sour brew from, from Germany. Yeah. Germany originally, but now America has bastardized it as we do everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. amazing. And I haven't had a nightmare brew, but I, I absolutely have been following them on socials and stuff. And they're they're right up there with all the, the super cool metal themed breweries going on in the States. Yeah. The explosion such as uh, Adroit Theory and and, uh, wake brewing and of course true brewing out of uh denver colorado are probably the the hippest and coolest out of them on my side i'm also drinking a metal themed brew but not from quebec it's from ontario it's a brand new brewery and uh i am very lucky to hold this in my hand thank you to nathan for making sure i got this this is third moon brewing company's continuous blood it's a 6.8 percent ipa let's crack these open let's uh, pour them out and let's uh, show everyone what we got Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Oh, we got to pour them. I got to get a glass. Go for a run. I'll, 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 I'll. All right. This one's for you. Ready? Hold on. Check this out. I want to see if this goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Doozy. I got, I got a twofer here. I'm going to rep another local brewing company with this one. I'm going to rep Mustache Brewing Company. Sick. Another awesome one from Long Island. Sick. Here, I'm going to show you. Here, boom. boom, yes. Look at that little logo. Hold on. I got to get it nice and going. I got some Monster Haze going on over here. I like it. I like it. I think I might find another glass and throw it in the freezer for the next one. Mm. Nice and chilled. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Salute. Oh, yeah. These guys kill it. Oh, my God. This is fucking insane. I've never had them. I'll go and say I've never had anything from Nightmare before. Very cool. You should have more of them. <laughs> I, I bought a whole fucking... That's, my, that's part of my story. Beautiful. I bought so much. <laughs> it's the story of my life, Kevin. <laughs> this is a creamy, juicy, tropical, um, just a little bit dank. Uh, some no no hot burn going on. It's, it's really fantastic. Uh, Third Moon Brewing Company, people, if you can get it, get it, buy it, drink it, and listen to death metal. You gotta love, I love these metal-themed breweries that are 
popping up everywhere. Yeah. Just this could be this could be an artwork. I love it. The art on this one's done by Yard Wolves. You follow him on uh socials as well. He's super cool. Or them, I'm sorry. Um I think the same story goes for Nightmare. Usually they have some like crazy artwork. Like straight up death metal t-shirt shit. Like black and white, dude's head getting slid off. But this one all the ones they had at the place were like these like drafts hmm. of like what's to be That's cool. like a concept art. And uh, it's a it's a person getting their tongue cut off by a reaper. I love it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and it describes the, there's like notes on it that say like it's a tattered reaper cloak. Hmm. And then next to it, it's like there's a scythe, you know, there's a tongue. <laughs> it's all notated. That's really it's cool. Sick. Maybe it's like an experimental brew and they're not sure they're going to make a, 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 a and make it a part of their flagship or part of their pure line well, of brews maybe. It was all the different flavors they had, except one. I today I picked up that had death metal logo, but this one honestly, it tastes like I'm drinking like a lime drink, but then you get hit with the beer after. Mm, and a little salt. It's an interesting flavor. I yeah, love it. Very. Easy. I love it. Yeah. Let, let's talk about beer, of course, because it's Vox and hops. T- tell me about your your first beer, Kevin. Oh God, it's like five lifetimes ago. It feels like <laughs> my first beer. Um, I think it was from my mother when I was like eight. <laughs> no, no, I, I think it was more just taking sips in here and there. But no, Irish family, Irish household. Uh, I was, uh, I remember trying a Corona way young, and I hated it, and it still holds true today. <laughs> damn virus, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hate it, right? It's the worst. Get it out. But no, uh, no, I've been a beer snob on and off. Like I have my my summers where it's just unstoppable times, just constant. Constant IPAs, double IPAs, and like, what's my favorite? I love the the Dogfish Head is like just the go-to. Absolutely. It's always around. It's in every bar. It's all over the place. Would you say that is the brew that that changed your, your perception of beer? Honestly, I don't even know what, would, what, what I could say started. I think it was like experimenting with, um, what was it? It was more, uh, Dogfish Head was a big one for sure, but it was like, Honestly, when I was getting in, like when I started touring with Pyrexia, I was going around trying all the other places and all the local breweries and things like that. And I was like, holy shit, like there's a lot more than I'm used to. Like even just local going to like parties and stuff, they would just bring whatever they had. I would just pick up whatever's at a, like I said, gas station. But no, uh, I would drink a lot of Dogfish Head and the, what the hell's the other one? I'm, I'm, I'm blacking out now. Not yet, I should say. <laughs> uh, I'm on the spot. I can't think. It's like it's like when someone asks you, "What's your top three death metal bands?" It's like you'll remember later. Kind of when, tomorrow morning when you're taking the shit, and that's when it will come to you. Yeah, I'll be like, "Fuck, I should have said that." One. <laughs> it was Lagunitas. Shelmer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Candy. It was Sierra Nevada. Nah, but... <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I, I I'll tell you the the only every time someone says Sierra Nevada, I always think of Derek Boyer. He's like, oh, they're they're all day pale ales or whatever they have. All day ales or something like that. He loves those. He's such a great dude. Mm-hmm. What a great dude. So much fun. Let's let's move into music. Let's talk about uh, a classic Vox and Hops question at this point. Uh, when you were growing up in your parents' or guardian's house, what music was playing when you were not in control of the radio? What music did your parents or guardians listen to? I like this. Um, I think my ever first approach to even getting to where I listen to what I listen to, I remember being like stupid young in the back seat. I think I was still in a car seat <laughs> from what I can remember. My mother would always listen to like, I guess you could say classic rock, but she loved uh, Meatloaf. Yeah, man. Right? Like, like I remember when uh, it, it would be, you know, she'd have the CD in. I never saw the CD until one day I stumbled across the album art. And I was like, that is the most badass looking thing. Bad out of hell. Damn right. That's exactly it. Yeah. I'm just like, that is a fucking awesome cut. Like I did again, coming from no metal background. I was just being like, what is this? Uh, This is awesome. It's a perfect transition (laughs) from he man. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Funny story. I don't think I've ever said on the podcast. I was very, very young and I always wanted to be a singer. So there was this, talent show something something going on and i was young this was i must have been in in grade seven and the song that i picked to sing is so inappropriate for uh, however old year old person in seventh grade is my brain doesn't work sure it was it was (laughs) two out of three ain't bad by meatloaf nice which which is a great track but but it's really like the chorus is like i want you i need you 
but there ain't no way I'm ever gonna something something. If it ain't, don't be sad because two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you, I need you, but nice. I'm never gonna be with you. Is is what the, the chorus is. But I'm a kid singing this. It made no sense. Yeah, How <laughs> all the parents are going like, what the fuck? <laughs> but it's a great track. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What began? What band quickly became your first band, Kevin? Uh Black Sabbath. Really cool. Yep, because because of that meatloaf story, I remember like asking my mom, "Can I borrow the CD? Can I use it? Like, just can I listen to that?" Uh, then I started trying to like get into like classic bands because my dad was into like the Doors, the Beatles, you know, the Who, all the thes. And um, he, re I remember him trying to get me into like Eric Clapton and stuff like that. And I was, that that was like my start of like I guess listening to any sort of classic rock. But my mom kind of put two and two together and realized like. He might like the heavier stuff. She grew up, she went, she was an Aussie fan growing up and went to one Black Sabbath show and never got into it again. She never went again. It was like too creepy for her. And she was just like, I'm out. But she got me Black Sabbath, uh, sold our soul for rock and roll, like the that album. And that was given to me, funny enough, I think as an Easter gift <laughs> or something weird. Like I, I remember getting it like like she'd hide little shit around the house. One year I got a Game Boy, and then one year. She hid two albums under the couch, and it was that album of Black Sabbath and Will Smith's Millennium. Yes. <laughs> so you could have gone. It, was, it could have gone either way. <laughs> yeah, I could have. Yeah, I could have been Big Willie style for the rest of my life, or just you know, dude, obey the upside down cross. But damn, no, I I got sucked in, and from there it was me figuring out who's Ozzy, who's I mean, who's the singer? It's Ozzy Osbourne. What is he into? Oh, I don't know. You could check him out now. He's got Ozzy Osbourne going around, still touring. And he also has this festival called Ozfest. Oh, who plays Ozfest? Mad uh, Hatebreed, Mashuga, Machine Head, da 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 da. And that's where, like, my fucking. My, that was the downfall for me. It's just I fell into, like, what's the next heaviest thing I, I could find? And here we are. Very, very, very cool. Do you remember the first live show that you went to go see? It doesn't have to be metal, something. It could be just your first experience witnessing music. Yep. Yep. It's a, it's a, it's a embarrassing yet awesome one again. I was a kid, Universal Studios, Smash Mouth. No, oh, that's good. Yeah. It was just like we were walking past and it was like, what's, what's going on here? And mind you, at the time I was a, a heavy WWF fan and uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was out because he hurt his knee. Like he always had a leg injury. Yeah. But for some weird reason, however the stars aligned, Smash Mouth was playing and Stone Cold Steve Austin was on stage and gave a hell yeah <laughs> and then left. <laughs> and I remember being like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and it was awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about your first time on stage? Do you, do you remember the, the, that first show? And, and was it as a vocalist? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was trying to start up just a high school band. And we played just a few original tracks and I was, I remember what I was wearing only cause my mother took a picture and it was like in her room for forever. But it was a, it was a, 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 at a library battle of the bands winner got to play like opening for some, like, honestly, it was like some bullshit show. It was like another <laughs> local showcase. You know what I mean? Like now looking back, it's like they weren't giving us anything, but, uh, yeah, you had I was singing. Tickets, our, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like if you win, you get a chance to sell 50 tickets, and maybe if you sell them, we'll give you another 20. <laughs> but no, I, um, yeah, I remember I was wearing camo shorts, an army hat, and a full blown chaos t shirt, and we were ripping. That's when I was like finding myself there. I was going, starting to go to some local shows and finding what I liked, and that was pretty cool. And the moment was immediately you loved it. Oh, oh, obsessed. Any nerves just the, he heading up towards absolutely. it? Absolutely. I didn't move the whole set. I just stood there with my hands like this, you know, no mic stand in between songs. The song will finish and I'll be like, I play the other. Oh yeah. Yeah. I go, I That's dance. hard. Eh? That's hard. <laughs> Find, finding your voice as a front man is extremely yeah. difficult. Yeah. And I got to say like, it was a good reaction, good reaction in the crowd, but it was, it's still one of those things that like half of the people are there, not for your band. They're all like, you know, opening a show, you got to sell tickets to your, your friends bands or, you know, Every band's got to sell tickets, so they come in and watch just their friends. But this was a free battle of the bands. No one's there to really watch the bands. They're all just there like it's a mall meetup. You know, they're all just hanging out, talking amongst each other. So when a song ends, there's barely any reaction. You're like, all right, so now what? <laughs> 
but <laughs> in the end it was a good experience because i'm still trying to do it today so yeah and you guys just you're, you're releasing you released you released an album with the merciless concept we're in the process right now Perfect. and here's where my chat's gonna go nuts you, they're gonna be like yeah kev we're at the album <laughs> i'll help pick, 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 <laughs> pick up pick a pick your brain on that um tell me about this project not not the whole origin story and, and you, nobody wants to hear that again <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i have this idea right <laughs> but, no. but tell me about um, what this project means to you and and why you sure. do it sure uh i mean we've been doing it for what's crazy to say is near over 10 years now i joined the band i want to say in 2010 i was not in a band at the time and uh you know charlie asked me charlie and matt our guitarist asked me to join joined it boom there's the whole origin story <laughs> now what's crazy about this band is that me and charlie have always kind of been like a cool partnership you know charlie was in pyrexia with me and at the same time charlie was in suffo with me so i think just alone our chemistry has always been sick and like anytime we can get in a room and really start expressing ideas about like what's heavy to us what do we remember like going to shows and being like fuck what the hell are we listening to we're trying to recreate that again very cool with every song which kind of makes it in a way hard to write songs sometimes because you're like all right we did that that sounds like this in this last song what can we do that's more extra fucking stupid heavy you know but i like it because i think for us we're one of the i want to say only other like active new york death metal bands right now that are on like a newer cusp you know like there are some bands i want to you know th i think of like splattered entrails i think of but my brain goes to dehumanize they broke up internal bleeding still playing shows suffo's still playing shows cool but like you got bands like immortal suffering they're not playing too much malignancy i haven't heard from them in a while they only play like two venues nearby in queens but like for a new band that's trying to like show a big face and get out there we're trying to do tours we're trying to go nuts you know so we're trying to re-release uh our album that we have coming out is half old stuff from old demos that we recorded back in 2012 that now are finally getting the justice of how they're supposed to sound now plus some new tracks very cool so it's very exciting stuff i just want i want people to fight to our song and that's about <laughs> it <laughs> uh do, how do you feel about, you're mentioning that a lot of the the new york scene bands are not there anymore how do you think that's going to affect the future new york scene if there's there's no bands like local bands that are big enough for young kids to go and watch now and see that it is possible you know something that is achievable versus you know watching a band come in on tour and that's just such a huge step versus watching those local heroes you know just stepping up stepping up stepping up yeah i feel like i i mean I know my Twitch is already thinking about what my response is going to be because I'm I've, I feel like I've turned into a grandpa <laughs> and I can't get into new shit at all and I and I'm always just like I'll put on like despise icon I'm like see that's deathcore like where the fuck did it go like where you know it's just such a whole different sound now but like I mean look kids are going to shows kids are going to go see bands you know there's a lot of new like this this crossover between like death metal it's like they took so there's like a genre that's floating around that I refuse to name that it's like they take a one cool kind of part from death metal, one kind of cool part from hardcore. And then maybe there's like this random like hip hop screaming, like I don't even know what to call it, but like, I guess like a uh, Gothic hip hop. And they're just like, let's put all that together. This is our shtick. And then, but there's mad bands doing that now. And I don't under, I don't understand what's going on. Cause I feel like when I was growing up going to shows, Everything was about, like, I guess, earning your step, going to shows, meeting people, growing within the scene, and, like, developing a sound with what you've learned and putting that back out to the world. Where now it's like someone's on the internet, they make a band with, like, three dudes in different states, and they record it all on GarageBand and put it out, and it gets fucking thousands of hits yep. i'm just like what's happening right now well, I, you, you nailed it it's the internet it's it's the fact that genres there are no genres every, anymore and, and our, yeah. we are accessible we have at our access just a, a wide array of so many bands and you can yeah. like this you can like that and that's what's happening right now is people that three people let's say like as you mentioned got into a room and they all like these 10 things and it all goes into the music yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's happening. And you it's don't just, have to like it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I guess my favorite, my famous sentence is, I don't understand. <laughs> and then the famous sentence I get back is, well, you don't have to understand. I'm like, yeah, but I want to. Because I'm just like, I, I want to see their perspective of like the comparison 
of like where things were and where they are now because i gotta say my music taste is not new like uh, yeah, I grew up, even the stuff I grew up with, I don't even think as the best stuff. It's more the stuff that I wish I was around mm. for is like still insane to me. Like I've never seen Pantera live, but I would give my left one to go. You know, like I, I, they, I, think, I think still to this day, they're still the most unique, heaviest, technical and like talented across the board bands. They can have a fucking four minute breakdown and then have shreddy parts in it. And no one questions it because that's who they are where there's not a lot of bands that can cross over that. And they could play their parts, whereas nowadays everyone's doing it in sections. Back in the day, it was live off the uh, floor. Yeah. Yep, yep. That. You fucked up <laughs> once? All right, bring it back. <laughs> one note's out of tune, a little, one string's out of tune, bring it back. <laughs> I want to talk about suffocation, of course. You, you probably get this all the time. Uh, you were in the band in a very, very strange moment of the band. Yes. Especially as a vocalist and me seeing it happen, I was trying to imagine myself in your shoes. You know, how do you pick which nights you go up, which nights Frank was going up? How, how, how You were never presented necessarily, especially at first, as the vocalist. You were just some dude that was there. Yeah, I was just in the right fucking time is the best way to say it. How how did you handle that? How did you cope with that? Uh, did, you know, it's like you're in the band, you're not in the band. Did you yeah. ever feel like it was your band? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was one of those things that I, I was jamming with them for a while before we hit the road. So I already felt established. I didn't feel like I had to prove anything to the guys, more or less. I had to prove more to the people that I was going to be there in, like... I remember we were jamming, we were getting ready, and then I would get last minute messages like, "Oh yeah, Frank's gonna come out for the first two weeks." And I'm like, "All right, whatever." Like I don't I, like it's I don't, it, again. I'm easing in. Who the fuck am I to say like, "No, I'm gonna play." It's like, nope. <laughs> New York is sold out. They want Frank. It's fine. It is what it is. So I'm like, yeah. I'd, look, I have no problem. I love Frank. I love the band, and I was. It was just kind of fun for me that we were able to do that. Now the way we went about that for those, like, say it was like two weeks. It would be like from New York down to Florida. It was shared between me and Frank. Frank would do all the older classics, and then I would come up and do some new songs. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it was number one, the fact that he didn't really know the newer songs. He knew some parts of it. You know, he, that was kind of like a tracked deal, and then, you know, he never had to play the songs again, so he never really had to learn them. So I was like, all right, I know the songs. We, you know, I'm partially on the album with him, so I'm still kind of fresh knowing the lyrics, and then... uh we would just do that live, and then once he was, we hit Florida, he flew home, and then I got the rest of the tour to myself. So, therefore, like, I had no real, I was never in a place of, like, oh, what the fuck, hmm. you know? And there were even dates in New York that he we would play, and I would be like, yo, let me get a Legion of Veracity in there. He's like, all right, yeah, sure. And then we would just swap, and then awesome. I would fucking watch it crush. It was fun. Awesome, awesome. And before you were there, there was Ricky Myers, who is now in the band again. Mm -hmm. So so it's a strange like flip flop that happened. Uh, yeah. I saw you you killed it at uh, Summer Breeze. I Summer saw Breeze, yeah. Summer Breeze. Uh, it was a crazy, we shared the stage crazy, that night. crazy fun day, fun yeah. night. Uh, we play. We deadlined. A lot of Jägermeister. <laughs> yes, there was the tap in the back, and there's even a sign. <laughs> there was a sign on the from your tour manager that said suffocation is not allowed to use this machine on the Jäger. <laughs> <laughs> That's Big Buddy Nick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, he was so against everybody drinking because then he would have to deal with us on the bus. Yes. We'd always be like, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be good. We were we were definitely like children on every tour we did with him where it was like, nah, we'll be good. I, be I promise we'll be on our best behavior. And then it's like bus call. Three of us are missing. You know, merch is still un <laughs> not unpacked. You know, it's just like, fuck, we're just partying with you guys. <laughs> Something's going on. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> right? And it's just, there's always catching up to do. And it was like, God damn it. Well, here we are. If you could uh, handpick a tour for the Merciless Concept, what bands would be on that tour? Oh, dude, I've been thinking about this for a while. Because I know I have friends of mine's bands that I want to play with us no matter what. I got Last 10 Seconds of Life, Monockers and Chat, what up? Uh, ingested, um, Cryptopsy if they're down. I got I got to talk to the singer, <laughs> and then uh, desecrate the faith. Another shout out. That's cool, Houston boys. Mm -hmm. um, but like, if I were to really think about like bands that are coming up, of like who I really would want to like experiment with, I would think about like uh, there's a band from France called Horned that I think is fucking sick. They are like, you know how I was complaining earlier about like they took bits and pieces of this and that and they mixed it up blah 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 
I'm a fan of taking good elements of both and making your own sound out of it. But when it's just copy paste, I fucking my brain explodes. But this band is sick because they'll put out like stupid good riffs, stupid tra- like very catchy, groovy technical transitions. And like, again, a little death metal note for them. All their art on the last album was Dan Seagrave. So I'm like, all right, it's it's got my attention <laughs> just by looks. And I checked it out. I was like, all right, let me see if it holds up. And it did. So that's a shout to them. Uh, what's another band that I like as of recently? Chamber's kind of cool. And then uh, if I had to think of one more, because I know I can go all day with some random bullshit. Uh, actually, let me just do a quick little look at my... Uh... All right, you know what? Boom, Aeon. Fuck yeah. We'll get Aeon out there because they're putting out a new album, so I'm waiting for that. So I'll just say I hope that can happen. Very, very, very cool. Let's dance back into craft beer. If you could make a craft beer for the Merciless Concept, what beer would it be, what style, and what would you call it? Oh, my God. I've never, ever thought of that, but shit, now it's a good idea. Of course it is. Um, talk talk yeah. to Nightmare. <laughs> yeah, exa- dude, honestly, th- th- but that's the funny thing about this. Real quick to piggyback off that. I, I met the dude, I don't remember his name right now. He came out to a show and we got to talk and he found out who I was. He's like, yo, let's go out and get drinks. Let's hang out. And like, I was trying to get him to sponsor the stream <laughs> with this and I've never had it before. And, um, but yeah, so like he came to see rings. I think that's what it was. He came to see rings. He was at the show. We all were drinking and partying and we got to chatting. He was like, what the fuck? Let's hang out soon. I was like, all right, word. We never got to hang out. But then I just saw this at the at the place, and I was like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. And I bought a bunch of their beer just now, and it's fucking delicious. Um, but if I were to make a beer, what would I name it? Uh, I would make... I'm trying to think of a clever word, like hops. Let's look and see what flavors in here. This starts... Soursop. Am I saying that right? Yeah, soursop is a fruit, if I, if I am correct. I would call it soursop 42, and it would be... Mm, it would have soursop in it, I suppose, and it would be like eight and a half percent. Brutal, brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a song. We have a single called "Subject 42. Very so I was just imperfect. thinking, what's re- what's relevant? <laughs> uh, let's answer to how you started screaming. Why screaming? Where did that come from? For myself, I'm a singer that fell into being a death metal vocalist. Were you someone that sang, or or did you dive straight into harsh vocals? <sighs> It's so crazy. It's all this happened when I was stupid young. It's like I was in band as a kid playing like fucking tuba and like just just, just trying to be a part of anything musical that I could at the time. That was the only option. So then after that, I was like, all right, well, I want to pick up something, maybe a guitar. Played guitar for like my dad bought me a guitar. I tried just playing by ear. So now I can only play breakdowns and single notes. You know, <laughs> that's all I ever learned. And I was like, this isn't for me, but I want to be in a band like I I. I Literally have the Slipknot duality, uh, not duality, fucking... Uh, disaster piece, no? Disaster piece, thank you. Yeah, the, you knew that, man. I was like, fuck. <laughs> the dual DVDs, the red and the black, and that, dude, that was watching epic. Joey Jordison that go upside epic. down. Exactly. Dude, watching that shit was like the turning point for me because I was like, I like new metal and all this stuff, and that's when I was just in my like peak of learning bands. I was at the time listening to Machine Head, Pantera, Slipknot, and whatever I can find. And that DVD I'd have on just loop as I cleaned my room. It was just because, you know, I had a little shitty boombox or my TV that had better speakers. I'd rock the Disaster Piece DVD on loop. And I was like, you know what? My dad bought me this shitty guitar. I got this 10, 10 inch little crate amp in the back. I'm going to plug my fucking like rock band guitar microphone, you know, rock band karaoke thing into that and see if it works. It did. <laughs> I'd get home from school at like two. My parents would get home at like 3.30. So I'm like, I got about an hour to like try just screaming in this thing and see if it works. And I'm doing like karaoke to my TV, just seeing if I can get that sound. And like, that's what kind of got me like going like, I think I could do it. I think I can, I think I can do that sound. And it was just over and over and over and over. And then it turned into what it is now. That's insane. That's exactly what happened with Trevor from the Black Dahlia murder. You know that, right? Really? That's exactly no. the karaoke machine jamming in his room. That's exactly. <laughs> well, how, you know, you got to hear it through a speaker. You know, I feel like even like, I see a lot of dudes warm up in their car. Like I do that sometimes, but it's like, I got to hear it. I got to hear it in a speaker blaring my head off. You know, that's like, even when I'm tracking vocals, I need this so loud that I can't hear anything in the room. I need to hear directly that. Me too. Me too. Uh, How do you stay healthy on the road? The road you mentioned warming up. Is that something that you actually do? I do a little bit. I used to get made fun of it by the guys on the bus. I would try to do like the humming shit. And you know what I mean? Like I got that fucking, I got some tracks to hum along to and all that stuff and get the exercises. Um, 
honestly, it's just tea, honey, a little. I, some people tell you not to do crazy with the honey, but I, sometimes I just do. Um, I try to stay as sugar-free as possible before sets is a better way to say it. And I'll eat light, drink tea, uh, do my little warm-ups. And sometimes I'll even bring tea on stage with me in a little, like, uh, thermos thing and just sip on that, you know, instead of drinking water that, you know, because I don't know, I, I don't like drinking cold water because it tenses me up, you know. And then, like, that, you know, I'm praying that, this, the, like, the venue's stage waters are not cold. When it's like time for go time, people start throwing me waters. I'm like, I don't want this. <laughs> this is going to fuck me up. <laughs> that's why I always bring my own water, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And that's, um, uh, that's what the point that it's gotten to. But that's why I love the tea too. Cause it's just, it's fucking feeling so good on stage. Mm. I'll have a little, like, it looks like a black sports bottle. I'll just take a sip of half the people are like, he's boozing right now. Look at him. <laughs> he's so metal. <laughs> <laughs> it's so brutal. Meanwhile, I got like breakfast gray or gray tea, whatever the fuck it is. I like that throat coat tea. Throat coat's pretty good. Throat coat's pretty good. What was the other one? There was another one. Not uh, There's like a Bigelow or Bugelow or something like that. But then, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a bunch of them. I always like, if I'm ever going to like cheat on like the sweetness ones, I love the raspberry and like the blackberry ones because those have like the most flavor with like little shit in it. Very cool. Mostly it's natural. And about warming up... Uh Terrence, no matter when he sees me, he goes, he, he, hey, hey. That's the first <laughs> thing he says to me every single time because of my, he won't let it die because of my warm up. So that makes me happy as long as I, I'm yeah, cool with that. Yeah, a little that. notoriety there. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's cool. That's sick. I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's definitely good to get known by. At least it's better than most things. <laughs> <laughs> like how how Eric is man bun for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah, I've been rocking the man bun the whole pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about your relationship with Twitch. Why did you start streaming? To tell me about that whole adventure. Yeah, uh, this adventure is fucking sick. Only for the fact that, like, you know, as you could probably relate as a front man, you like your podcast and making some sort of engagement when you're home. Uh, for me, Twitch is sick because I literally. You know, I can talk. I could literally sit here and do this. Number one, I can talk about music I like. It's all programmed on here that people could just type a song name and it starts playing in my ear. That's so cool. You know, it's it's such a it, it's such a very interactive, fun thing for me. And like, it really started back when I was like, I've been playing video games my whole life on a computer for the most part. So I'm always extra nerdy whenever there's a chance to be. <laughs> and like, you know, and I've been playing games like Counter Strike and things like that. And I was always like. Back when I would play religiously, I used to compete in like Call of Duty when I was a kid on Call of Duty 4 and all this shit. I was like, I was in a clan. We won little tournaments and stuff. I was like, oh, it'd be cool if I can like show this at some point. And Twitch became that thing. And I remember actually giving, to I was giving Hobbs the idea that I wanted to do it. He's like, don't be one of those streamer guys. Lady. You know, anything internet. He's like, get, it, get me out of here. <laughs> uh, but like, <laughs> I remember telling him that. I'm like, ah, maybe he's right. I don't know. I know. I, whatever. And then once I left Suffa, I just kind of was like, fuck it. I got all the audio gear. I got my cameras. I got all this just from band promotion. Why not plug it in and see what happens? And here we are now. That's amazing. I'm loving it. That's amazing. We're getting to have this on there, you know? <laughs> yeah. And now, But now it's sick because... I thought at the time it was a bad idea because I kept doing stuff like trying to fuse the music in. But at the time when I joined Twitch, it was all gamers. And, you you know, metalheads are gamers, too. Like, look at George Fisher, bro. One of the biggest gamers ever. But, like, he's a guy that w he would make a killing streaming, but he doesn't. It's just, a, you know, it, he doesn't want to do it. Whatever. I think it's a generational thing. For, for sure. For sure. And, like, like. As time has gone on, I've been seeing more people like seeing it, especially with the pandemic. I think the pandemic woke everybody up that has any sort of like social engagement skill where they're like on social media, uh, you know, Instagram, Facebook, live streams, killing it. Have you reached the point where there are sponsors uh, for your, your Twitch or is that something that you would like? Yeah, I, I have some. I have small affiliations that I'm very proud of. Um, I have right now, actually, the microphone I'm using is um, Heil Sound. Very cool. Pile sound microphones. Um, I we played a venue in St. Louis. I'm sure you've probably played played there too, and I can't think of the name of it right now. I think I've only ever done pops. Does that make sense? But anyway, there's a venue in in St. Louis that we played, and uh, they had this microphone that had airflow like out the sides. It's designed to be cupped. Oh, cool. So for so for me, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm down. Let me try this shit out. 
And they, they gave me one to use for the show, and I just I jammed with it, and it was nice. And they have a bunch of different models. And uh, honestly, it's it for me, like, they sound like just, like, here's Shore, here's Heil Sound. Like, they're, they're a little above price point for sure. Like, say, uh, the SM58, right? They have a PR22, which is slightly thinner in frame and, like, night and day difference. When you plug in a 58, it sounds like you're talking like this just a little bit. You get that little muffle sound when you have to cupped. work around. No, no, even just in general. Like, if I were to do a test, I unfortunately, I don't have my other one right now. I sent it out, but I dropped it and broke it. Uh, so, <laughs> so I actually had to get it fixed. But uh, when working, it's fucking perfect. Awesome. See, so yeah, SM58s don't break, though. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's one thing. I'm a, Sen- I'm a Sennheiser boy, though. Yeah, okay. I mean, I do like the E835, right? The E835? Or 935 is what I use. Okay, okay. I think they're cut, like they're small frequency differences, right? Very. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a gear nerd, but not, I know that I enjoy this microphone and that's it. Right. I mean, look, I'm the same way. I, I use what I like just because I've tried it. You know what I mean? Like I try this because this is good for like this. And like if I've watched a lot of podcasts and like now that I have one because they hooked me up after everything. And I now I see it. It's like buying a car, and then you see that fucking car everywhere. You're like, oh wow, oh wow, he's got one. You know, but like for this, I saw it, and like it's plug and play in terms of dialing in for EQ and stuff. Where you buy an SM Seven B, you need a cloud lifter. You need to have the right, you know. Um, uh, oh my god, I can't get the word. Plugins. Pl- plugins and like uh, thing you plug into the preamps. You need a good preamp, or you need a booster and all that shit, like the cloud lifter and. And I like it's this one. I just plug right into my interface, and it sounds perfect. Perfect EQ. Don't gotta fuck with it. I maybe put. I can dial like for this. I put a little low end, a little high end, and that's all I need, dude. I'm not fucking around. Awesome. Let, let's wrap this up with with one last question. It probably never happens to you because you're very, very in control. You know what's going on all the time. But every once in a while, especially when you're touring with Suffocation, what is your hangover cure? Oh. Sleep for 24 hours. <laughs> don't talk to me. Don't look at me. I'm going to drink water and that's it. I'm not even eating. Uh, <laughs> honestly, that was, I actually have one short story. Uh, when I toured with Suffo, it was my birthday in Minneapolis at the Caboose. And Derek took my wireless mic out of my hand and shouted to the crowd, Hey, this is Kevin's birthday. Let's make him forget it. Throws the mic back at me. Let me tell you, after that fucking day, after that show, everybody. Came up to me at least a drink, a drink, a shot, a drink. Hey, what are you drinking? Drink and drink, 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 drink. Do you know Robin Mason? I do, of course. Vox and Ops alumni. She was, uh, she was, uh, she was um, Morbid Angels merch and tour manager. Dude, she comes up to me with a shot. Now all night I've been drinking just like whiskey and rum, whiskey, rum, and I've been like keeping myself in the pocket. I'm <laughs> smashed with Trey from Morbid. We're doing like on the side of the bus joking around. And he was, dude, he had this rat fishing thing. That, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but like. Uh, rat fishing? It, all right. Well, I'll talk about it real fast. It's one of the funniest tour stories ever. Dude, he, <laughs> he would have these little fucking fishing rods. One was, no joke, Frozen themed from the movie. And the other one was Dora the Explorer themed. Walmart kid fishing rods like this long. And he, he would put like peanut butter, cupcake, and all this garbage at the end of it and throw it down into a sewer drain or behind a dumpster (laughs) or behind whatever. And he would pray that he would catch a rat. And he, cause he's like on this whole journey that rats are just like us musicians, man. They're one with the street or whatever we was talking about. And I was having a field day with him. And every time, like I would fuck with him, but he wouldn't catch on. He would think I was super into the fishing. I was like, bro, give me one. Let's go. Let's go behind the venue right now. And he would run. He would do it with me, dude. It was such a good time. Oh. But what would he do if he caught them? Dude, he never caught one. Has never. <laughs> has never, ever caught one. Dude, like in San Diego outside of uh, uh, House of Blues, there's a lady, a homeless lady, walking. I'm not shitting with you here. Like three giant rats crawling in her shirt. She had three pet rats that would live off her and she'd feed them out of her collar like this. They'd run up and, fuck, and run oh. back down. 
dude, we're like, Trey, you gotta get out of here. You gotta see this. He wouldn't come, he wouldn't come off the bus. He didn't want to see it. He was like, fuck that. No. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, what, your whole image is gone with this, dude. You love this. <laughs> Vietnam, we were standing outside a craft beer bar, of course. Uh, shout out to Don Hurst, the, the brewer there. And there's like low wires everywhere, and they're just rats just running over our heads. It's, it was insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lo, uh, to wrap up with the other story, Robin Mazin shows up with a shot for my birthday. He says, Happy birthday. With these little baby cupcakes. I gave the cupcakes to Trey so he can go fishing. <laughs> and I took the shot. And it was Jägermeister. And it threw me off my whole fucking swing. And the curtains went down. I blacked out. I fell asleep on the grass where the buses go. On the side of the caboose for three hours. They tried to pick me up and bring me onto the bus. And I was like, Mm-mm, put me down. I'm going to throw up everywhere. Just put me down. And they left me there until bus call. And I took a nap. They threw a hoodie on me. And it was sick. And then uh, that was the worst hangover I ever had. Where I laid in my bunk for 24 hours. Thank God we had an off day. Wow. Yeah. That was the yeah. worst. They happen. They happen. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Kevin, thank you so, so much for taking the time, having a chat with me, sharing a brew. Yeah. Talking about your life, music, and craft beer. Everyone get ready for this new slash old revamped The Merciless Concept record. Yep. And I got to do a little sneak tease for you. I have another project in the works. Just keep an eye up. It's we We got things... I can't, I can't go into detail, but I'm going to leave it with hype. Things are signed. Things are moving. Things are big. And I'm excited to see you out there, buddy. Very cool. Cheers. Cheers, homie. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. This is very cool to do. I, ha- I have never done a live interview on Twitch before, and uh, this was very cool. I'm very happy that uh, Kevin and I collaborated this way. It was a a lot of fun to hang out with him and with uh, all of his followers on Twitch. It was actually really funny because uh, Kevin's going to hate that I'm saying this, but Kevin (laughs) knocked over his beer and spilled it all over his equipment. He was extremely upset with himself. And uh, I cut that out of this episode. Luckily, none of his equipment was affected by the spillage of the delicious craft beer. And Kevin still has not cut a cup holder into his custom desk because I did ask him about that recently. You should all definitely go check out that new Merciless Concept record, which did drop at the end of December. Everyone is stoked about it. I'm stoked about it. It is available on all streaming platforms, and I have dropped all the pertinent links for the Merciless Concept in the description of this podcast. If you enjoyed this Vox & Hops episode, you should absolutely go subscribe to it on the podcast platform of your choice. But not only that, you should take the time to rate it and write a review for the podcast, because if you do that, more people just like yourself will be able to discover the Vox and Hops podcast. Vox and Hops is brought to you by Sound Talent Media. I will be back next week with two episodes, one on Tuesday and then another on Friday. But until then, I hope you all remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. Oh,